Hey there, thanks for coming over and hanging out with me. I'm gonna share something with you that a lot of you, every single last one of you have been asking to see, and that is the addition. <laughs> I've gotten a ton of requests to update you guys on it, and I just haven't because honestly, it's so frustrating. I, do, I try not to even think about it. <laughs> There's been so many mishaps. It's hard for me. I don't even know when the last time I showed you was. They told us it would be ready by Thanksgiving. We joked and said, of what year? Clearly it is still not done or I would have shown you it all. I've been waiting to show, like, oh, I'll just wait till it's done to show them. Like, how much longer can we wait? So I'm gonna show you the progress. And let me back up and tell you that initially it was supposed to be done before Wolfgang was born. October 2022? So we've been waiting for a while. We started this project, oh my gosh, before we moved in, honestly. Um, okay, and then aside from that, I wanna make some soups. It's cold outside today, which is not gonna last a long time. I say cold, but it's probably like 60 degrees. But it's gonna be 60 all day long, so I'm really excited for the next couple of days. I can't decide between bacon, bean soup, and broccoli cheddar soup. I don't think I have broccoli, so I think that's gonna make the decision for me. Or I'm gonna run to the store. I don't, and then a part of me is like, let's just go big and make five soups at a time, and then I'll make like a what's for dinner soup video. But I just want soup right now. And I know I have bacon, so I'm definitely making that one. I just want all the soups. And then later today, I have to finish up Christmas shopping. And I say finish up, did you hear that? I said finish up, which means I'm basically done. I, I feel like I'm 95% done. I say that with a question mark, but I'm pretty sure it's close. So I just have like a few more things to get. I need to check my list twice and make sure on that. And then I need to organize all the stuff that I did get my kids for Christmas. I need like five bins and just bring all the crap in and just sort it out and separate. Uh, first I need five bins. Where am I gonna, should I just buy bins? Make, I'll just make pile, garbage bags. That sounds great. Anyway, that's on my list of things to do today. I went Christmas shopping yesterday. I spent all day Christmas shopping. And the car is like piled to the roof with gifts. Did I go overboard or, or do I just have a lot of children? I don't know, all right, let me bring you to the addition before someone comes today and like stands there so it would be awkward to film. Let's take a little field trip, field trip to the addition. And yes, wow, what's that you say? A hamper in the way? Ooh, ah, we have a hole in the wall, you guys, a hole in the hallway. And I call it a hole, not a hallway, because that's, it's part of the frustrating part. Hey, do you remember when um, the very first question we asked the architect was, is this a load bearing wall? Would this be a good place to like continue the house and make an addition? And he said, yeah, absolutely. Let me look at the blueprints and I'll make it happen. Spoiler alert, um, it's a load bearing wall. <laughs> and that is precisely why we cannot make a hallway to code yet. It's a long story, I tell you, I'll get to it. Okay, and then, oh my gosh, the rest of the place doesn't look too shabby. So my hair, should I apologize for it or should, it just is what it is, it's fine. Okay, the tile guys came yesterday. We, oh, and the tile, another dilemma. Could you imagine another dilemma? <laughs> it's like every step of the way, and I'm not complaining, because I know eventually it'll be done. It is frustrating, it's whatever. But every step of the way has been like, oh, issue, issue, issue. And even yesterday when the tile guy was here, we spoke with him about it because um, he's like prepping the hallway tile to do the hallway tile. Uh, the rest of the floors have been done for a while, but uh, we asked like, do you know to take this out and put the tile there? He didn't, he wasn't gonna, do, I just. And so I was like, oh my gosh. Alex was like, no, we have to like step by step tell them, like make sure. So I'm glad that he did that. Otherwise we would have had to have them come back and fix it and that's just a whole other problem in and of itself. Okay, oh wow. No, nothing has been done. There's cinder blocks. I don't know like how to tell you step by step because there's so much happening, uh, but also not happening. So I just looked outside and I said, oh, are they prepping out here? Because um, out here we do have plans to put uh, a lanai, a patio, if you will. And so they came by like, I feel like two months ago to discuss it and I saw these and I was like, oh my gosh, but no, they're just cinder blocks. <laughs> I'll leave that door open. It might seem a little less echoey. Okay, so. Where should we begin? Should I show you the rest of it and then we'll just talk about one dilemma at a time? Hallway, this is obviously like the biggest dilemma. So, the hallway. 
um, the entrance to the hallway. Good news is they did patch up Avelina's door that was there. Because this used to be Avelina's closet. Obviously the entrance to her closet was right there. That was a door. And we were debating back and forth, should we close up that door or this door? And so this is her room. That is where the door once was, and now it is just a wall. And then this will be the new closet. This won't be her room, this will be Wolfgang's room. And uh, the double doors into the closet. We just had Wentworth's closet. We put a wall in the middle and split it in half. So he no longer has a walk-in closet, but we do save some space in that room. That's the smallest room in the house now, and it would have been even smaller. The original plans had us adding a closet, three, losing three feet in that room to create a closet. So it just worked out better that way. They're gonna have a secret door in their closet. We have the plans. We haven't paid the closet people yet because built-ins, and then we decided, oh, let's just do all the closet built-ins. But do you know how much built-ins are? We may have overstepped there. So now we're like reeling it back, thinking like, okay, maybe just the secret door closets and then a couple other things I'll show you in Eleanor's room. Okay. So back to the hallway, see one hallway and then we get on all those tangents. It's a lot. So this, the load bearing wall, the load is right here. And this, I think a code hallway is 33 inches, 32, 36, somewhere around there, 34. I don't even know anymore. At one point in time I did <laughs> when we were discussing this. Sat to report it's like two inches shy. So what are we gonna do? Go to the architect, surely he can think of something to have. Okay, so he did come up with new plans, um, but it's gonna cost us a lot of money. And by a lot of money, I mean $30,000 to make a hallway. I'm sorry, what? It's also mostly frustrating because it shouldn't be an issue, right? I get it, people make mistakes, but also, do you have insurance? Like, is your insurance company gonna pay $30,000 to make a hallway because you told us there's gonna be a hallway? It's just really frustrating. So instead what we're doing is putting a door there uh, because to pass inspection, make it to code, we're gonna do that and then hire a different architect who will approve plans to relocate the load in either wall that will not cost $30,000 because this architect like apparently won't approve the plans and he did, who care? I don't even want to like talk. He went months like ghosting us. So it's a, it's a very, very, very big issue. I digress. So just to pass inspection because we have this door, so it'll pass inspection. It has a door, like an entryway, an access point. So the hallway, it doesn't, isn't necessary. Obviously to live in this house, it is necessary for us and I want the hallway to look better than that. And you might think like, oh, what's the big deal? What's the problem? It just is. It's not very big. And then coming from this way, it's, just, it's too narrow. Okay, that's the problem. <laughs> Especially with the amount of money that we're paying for this addition. Like, th this, should, this should be a non-issue. Okay, so moving on to the tile that is not here uh, because it never got ordered. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So when we ordered, obviously the rest of the floors, we have this floor in here, it's covered to protect it. It's, they're like fake wood floors, LVP or something. Oh, this is mostly covered too. So when we did the floors in here, we do have electricity. Ah, let there be light and a skylight. That's exciting. Okay, um, is this, I haven't shown you the bathroom yet. I guess, let me back up. When we bought the rest of the floor, uh, there was an issue with the hallway flooring and we thought, okay, let's shop around. Let's try to find something that matches a little better because it, we would like it to match the best we can find. It's like porcelain tile with a travertine face. I don't know, you guys. And then it's stone. So with any stone, not, you're not gonna find anything that matches perfectly. We have a few in the garage, but certainly not enough to continue on a hallway. So we did our best. I think this is it. He brought it yesterday. Yeah, that's it. Okay. We did our best to match. We went, we spent months going from stores, tile stores, bringing a sample of our tile, trying to match it up with whatever anyone had. And by the end of it, we couldn't find anything. We just threw our hands up and surrendered and said, that's, we'll just pick one. It's good enough. Well, I'll put a runner over it. It won't be a big deal. I'll show you. Let me just match it up to show you the difference. Okay. So this is what we have right now. 
Oh, I'm putting it up to itself is so horrible. It's way gray, it's way white. There is like no cream in that whatsoever. This one has like specks of green and blues and it's just beautiful and it hides all the dirt. <laughs> I love it. Uh, this one is, yeah, that's the best we could do. Honestly, that I wanna say like that doesn't even look anything close to what we picked out when we ordered it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it looked so much creamier, but what are you gonna do? Like it's all, that's just how it is. So anyway, that's the best. If you just don't look, cause it really looks, and I'm gonna put a runner over it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine because it must. Anyway, so when we finally surrendered and said, okay, let's just order that one, that was like May. <laughs> And apparently, like, okay, he, the guy was like, all right, got it. And this, the tile guy, so great, wonderful. You know, he spent a lot of time with us, he, but he didn't order it. Again, people are human, things slip through the cracks. We understand mistakes happen, but it's like, how can a mistake happen with every, every single step? So he said, I'm so sorry guys, whatever. So then he ordered it. It was like a few weeks ago when we realized, oh, it was never ordered which thankfully it wasn't on like back order. And now I'm thinking, is that why the color is off? Cause it wasn't exactly, it doesn't matter. Um, okay. <laughs> so the tile guys will be here today. They were here yesterday prepping. Uh, they'll be here today to do more work. I don't really know all the steps involved in tile making, but maybe by the time I'm done with this video and editing it, I'll be able to show you a clip of it somewhat done or maybe more progress. Okay, so that's that. Let's continue on. Uh, oh, these closets, oh my gosh, aren't they all amazing? Oh my gosh, and all the lights, you guys, the electrical guys who were in here doing all the lights. Amazing, let there be light. That's very yellow, actually. How's the hallway light, is this yellow? No, it's like a house. It's like a house color. Yellow, white, I guess I'll leave it on. Okay, so uh, the closets are awesome. We're still debating. We haven't hired anyone or done made any plans to put built-ins in here. If you have any ideas, like the design of the built-ins, because we're just thinking like built-in shelves, like nothing fancy. I don't know, but should I have drawers? And then here's the problem. You add drawers to built-ins, the price just quadruples. <laughs> But in my head, I'm like, drawers would be so nice to have. In basically storage closets, because how many linens do you actually have? This will be like party storage and board game storage and stuff like that. So that's what we're thinking, but also not thinking because we don't have any plans for those closets. So if you have something in mind, I need some ideas. I'm mentally exhausted. Moving on to Eleanor's room here. Again, all the electricity in, is in. Uh, the floors have been installed, baseboards. They haven't painted yet. We're waiting on paint, which I can't remember the paint I picked out. I think the color is like something linen by Sherwin-Williams. It matches the rest of the house. Something linen, white linen, not white linen. I don't know, I'll put it on the screen if you're interested. I don't know, it's just a very basic color. I don't know, I just wanted to match the rest of the house. Again, the mental load, I was like, nah, I don't care. Maybe that's the problem, I don't care that much. Okay, so for Eleanor's room, she obviously has a closet. I'm wanting to do away, oh, it's so echoey. Oh, and this window is broken. <laughs> Whatever, I'll film this way. So I'm wanting to do away with dressers and stuff, even though she had, has ample space for a dresser in here. This room is absolutely massive. Both of the rooms are. That was by design, it was on purpose, I explained why. In a previous video, Cliff Notes version, essentially, because you never know where life is gonna take you. We always want our kids to feel welcome here and like there's enough space for them. And down the road, if they have a family of their own and they you know, come into some trouble and need to move back home, plenty of space for them here. That is the hope. You know, in Europe, they do multi-generational homes for a reason um, because, let's rent have you been outside lately <laughs> have you checked inflation rent is insane it's like four thousand dollars for a one bedroom half bath it's cr i mean i know we live in a very expensive state like florida so if maybe if we want to move to illinois but i feel like it's expensive everywhere but we just want our kids to feel welcome here it's not like they turn 18 and they're out of the house so anyway i could talk more about that but i'll link what i spoke about it last time 
in the description box below if you're interested with the timestamp or whatever. Okay, so this, another pretty large closet if you ask me, and we talked about getting built-ins for this. Nothing too crazy, just something in the middle with a few drawers and then some hanging stuff on the sides here so you can kind of see what we were looking at. Astronomical price, so I'm, I'm unsure if we're actually gonna do that. And then back here, the plan all along was to have built-ins with a window seat, so we're definitely doing that. We're gonna move that fence so Eleanor will have a lovely view back there. So we're gonna just relocate the fence and then obviously there'll be a patio back here too. Eventually, maybe, who the heck knows, two years from now. And then moving this way, there's a pocket door here. I'm just not even gonna mess with it. This is the Jack and Jill bathroom that I've you know, dreamed about for years and years since I was an itty bitty little girl. No, I'm just kidding. I just always love the look of a Jack and Jill bathroom, the feel of it. No one's gonna access this. This is like the back of the house. It's just for the people who live in these rooms, right? So this is the vanity. This is the color we picked out. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you ask me, there are handles that I picked out. I actually got them from Amazon. This might be it. I went to, I mean, Home Depot, Lowe's. Oh, of course they're wrapped so you can't see them. I went all the places trying to look for handles. I finally landed on these. It is a cool tone. It's a silver, silver brass or something like that. I don't really know, but I do know there are a lot of different things <laughs> when you're looking at handles. I just liked how this one was extra large. It like the drawers are pretty big. So I thought this would look pretty nice. And that's what I landed on. They have yet to install them, but they're here. When they're ready, I don't know what these are either. Oh, oh, hooks, like towel hooks and stuff along this back wall. I did get wallpaper for the bathroom and several people have told me to hire someone to do it because it is challenging. And since, especially since we have really tall ceilings, I don't even know. Even if I stood on the counter, I would not be able to reach the top. Would I get a ladder in here? Like, I don't even know the logistics of it, let alone having to do wallpaper. I really just wanna do this back wall and then my mind spirals like, oh, if I'm gonna hire someone to do wallpaper in the bathroom, I might as well get more wallpaper and wallpaper my laundry room because I always wanted to do that. But then what would match my laundry room? And then I have to paint the cabinets in my laundry room and then Pinterest shows me my dream laundry room and I'm like, yes, let's get all the things to make it look like that. It's like give a mouse a cookie kind of thing. So. That project is on pause <laughs> because we're still dealing with all of this, but um, eventually I do want wallpaper up in here and I did buy it, so we have it. It's just a matter of like getting it up. <laughs> Maybe a DIY in the future. Okay, I'll show you the rest of the bathroom. So on the vanity, they have drawers, cabinets, drawers, cabinets, drawers, so so much storage in here. I mean, it's huge, just the, the amount of space. And then this is the wall I want the wallpaper on. Maybe I'll just wallpaper all the walls in here because I don't know how much wallpaper I got. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know. I know I got more than I needed. Um, and then in here, another pocket door here. This is the bathroom, the commode, and then the actual linen closet where we'll put the towels and stuff. And then the tile guy um, is still working in here. This is the shower. And uh, yeah, pretty nice in here. Love this large window. It lets in so much natural light. That's my favorite thing in life, natural light. We are needing some shelves in here. And they are making the niche box bigger. <laughs> if you saw it the first time, literally it was here to here. Just like here to here and then inside and then the amount of tile and then the, and that was it. And so I said, oh. <laughs> Initially I said, oh, it's fine, just leave it. And then the contractors came and they said, you're paying for this service. Like we wanna make sure that you're happy about it. Don't feel bad about it. They can come and fix it. And so I said, okay, let's get a bigger niche box because the, the one we had literally like one shampoo bottle. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know, so don't settle. There's that because I'm a people pleaser. I'm like, okay, the amount of money I'm paying, my, our contractor was like, don't settle. You need it bigger, essentially. The tile guys are great too, by the way. They didn't give us any grief. They were like, okay, you want it bigger? No worries. As you can see, like it's a lot of extra work. They basically have to redo that entire wall. So I'm really thankful that they're doing it. So I'm, ha I'm excited to show you when that's done too. Okay, so there's that. The tile has been in there for a while. And then moving on to Avelina's room. But before we do that, let's bring our attention toward the ceiling. Remember this? Yes, the skylight of my dreams. We were supposed to have two skylights, one in here, one in 
the bathroom area. We have the large window. I'm cutting in skylights. I got interrupted. I filmed the rest of the video yesterday, but details are irrelevant. Let me finish up explaining what the heck is happening in here. There's actually even progress that has been made since yesterday. So where were we? Skylight? The niche box. There was supposed to be a skylight here, but the way that the roof was just didn't allow for it. I guess, uh, I don't know, someone made a mistake, didn't do something right. I'm happy to at least have one. I just love that color cabinet so much. Oh, and here's a close up of what the countertop looks like. There are little flecks of blue in there that kind of match really well with the cabinet. So, oh, a cockroach. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, moving in to Avelina's room. So that will be like her little office nook. I love that we decided to put a window in here. I wish I would have had more information and I would have put a window in her closet. This is her closet, AKA second room, AKA future nursery, AKA her hideaway, literally her cave, whatever the heck she wants to do in here. It is massive. It's huge. Obviously for a couple of reasons. We designed some built-ins for in here. Nothing has been concrete yet, nothing is approved, but I don't know, we're still deciding. Obviously drawers are expensive, everything is expensive, but we, I thought like, oh, maybe a nice countertop could maybe be useful as a nursery changing table in the future. I don't know, a vanity for now, but she's not into that idea. So we'll see, we're still trying to approve things and then figure things out, not approve. And then this is the rest of her room. Oh my gosh, when I say massive, uh, pr pretty much the same size as Eleanor's, my cousin is texting me. She's like, it's snowing. I live in Florida, so I always love those texts of pictures and stuff. This is the rest of her room. Just beautiful, big, large, spacious. I mean, once we put a bed in here, I'm sure it won't look all that big and large and spacious. <laughs> Not much else to say about it. It obviously still needs paint. Uh, the big thing in her room is like her closet. So she's not getting a window seat or anything. She wasn't really into that. That's more of Eleanor's thing. So her budget is going to all of the built-ins. And then we're back to the hallway. So we made a circle all the way back around. And as you can see, progress. I don't know if I can step on this. I feel like it should be fine. But he was here yesterday doing all of this with the, I don't know, tile work. He's getting ready to put the hallway tile in and he was working hard getting all of this up and my gosh okay this is you'll see you'll hear it in the future oh my gosh i love this can you see the little baby footprints oh just the sweetest i guess during while he was doing this one of his tools broke so he had to like leave and come back or whatever but you'll hear all of this happening a little later in the video so that's the progress for now on the addition i mean we've got walls we've got baseboards i feel like we're almost there we're almost but it's looked like this for months and months and months <laughs> now it's just the small details getting everything buttoned up and painted and finished so i'm hoping by easter <laughs> all right moving on let's make some comfort soups it's bacon bean soup it is one of the best soups i've ever had we don't eat it often <laughs> i probably make it like once a year but it has such like a rich flavor, like the depth of flavor that's in there. I'm going to try to look up the recipe because in my mind now I'm like, I don't think we have the right beans. It's a Pioneer Woman recipe, by the way, and I have her cookbook. Speaking of, the other day when I went Christmas shopping, of course, I found some things that I was like, mm, that would be a nice gift for me. And so I found, I apparently she has a new book. Pioneer Woman has a new cookbook and who else? Joanna Gaines has a new cookbook too. Did you know? I feel like I'm so off of my cookbook game because I'm all consumed in macro-friendly foods. I don't know if I would buy the Pioneer Woman cookbook anyway. I have, I think I have a couple of them. Carrots, there's carrots in here. I guess any good soup has carrots, celery, and onion. The trifecta, what do they call that? A mirepoix. I gotta dig way back in my memory from when they taught me a cordon bleu. Oh, it calls for tomatoes, but I'm pretty sure I never add those, so I'll get over it. One pound of white beans. How about two cans? Actually, one can is one pound, but I'm gonna double the recipe because if I'm making it once, I might as well eat it twice. I don't know if I have chicken stock. That, that is one thing I overlooked when I was loading up my pantry staples. Cause then I thought, oh, have you looked at the expiration date of chicken broth, chicken stock? It's like two years. Isn't that right? And then I thought, well, I live on a homestead. I might as well make my own stock. Found some. 
All right, it's fairly simple. I also need some tomato paste, it's in my fridge. I buy it in the tube uh, because this recipe only calls for like, I don't know if I'm doubling about four tablespoons. The recipe went away, I don't know, my phone is crazy. Yeah, two tablespoons per recipe. I don't know if I have celery. <laughs> I do have bacon, I'm trying to figure out how much is in here. The recipe calls for one pound, I never feel like that's enough. And especially since I'm doubling it. I have some left over from, I made something with bacon. Oh, Brussels sprouts, I think for Thanksgiving. And then this is two pounds. So I might just start out with two pounds and that's probably going to be fine. All right, I'm gonna see if I have celery and stuff. Curses, I don't have celery. That's what I get for making buffalo chicken dip the other day. But can we get a round of applause for how organized this looks? I do have some herbs in here, but those are looking pretty sad. All right, Wolfgang woke up from his nap and I'm just going to make a grocery list of things that I need to grab. So celery, and I guess since I'm out, I might as well get stuff to make broccoli cheddar soup. Good news, I got some celery and I grabbed everything to throw the soup together. So I just have to get my miso sauce ready and then get this thing started and then we'll have lunch and then I'm gonna make the other soup and we'll have dinner. But I'm doubling both of them so it'll be just a smorgasbord of soups for dinner and then Alex decided hamburgers would be a great option as well. So I don't know. I'm just excited about having soups. The weather is like perfect soup weather which doesn't always happen here in Florida. Seems pretty basic, pretty simple. I'm gonna start chopping. The first thing that needs to cook is the bacon so I'm just gonna dice it up and then cook it while I'm cutting up the rest of the vegetables. I need to roll my sleeves up. Have you seen that <laughs> reel? <laughs> it's like Ariana Grande cooking because you know how she always has her sweaters like literally hanging off. Well, I don't know if she does, but I'm not a huge Ariana Grande fan, but I think we all know someone who is always having sweaters like, <laughs> like this, you know? <laughs> how do you wash your hands? How do you get anything done? Two pounds of bacon. That reel always makes me laugh. I, I showed it to Alex the other day. I, she's making chocolate or something, and then she's washing dishes. It's so hilarious. I could never, even after I go to the bathroom, if I have long sleeves on, those things are going straight up to my pits, okay? So to ensure no water gets on my sleeves, huge pet peeve. If you start to cook the bacon in a cool pan, it'll render most of its fat that way. It's the best way to start. As you can hear, the tile guys did arrive. And I think at this point he was working on getting up the wood floor. That, that wasn't even the jackhammer. That was like the first machine and then the jackhammer came. Whoa, that is a noise that I could probably listen to for the rest of my life and enjoy it. All right, way better than <laughs> any song, right? So right now I'm just cutting up celery. Whatever the recipe calls for, I oh, listen, I always do more. It doesn't matter if I'm doubling it or not. And I am doubling this recipe because I find that Whenever I make one portion of this, it's like enough to feed Alex. It's definitely not, I mean, maybe if you're feeding a few people, a couple people, whatever. But if you, if I got soup, unless I'm eating an entire loaf of bread with it, which I'm trying not to eat an entire loaf of bread with my soup, I need like a hearty portion, you know? Don't give me a piddly little bowl. I need a ton and I need it to be hearty and I need to feel full after I eat a soup. And this one is not creamy but it is hearty because of the beans and the bacon and then all the veggies. So I always add more. I think it calls for like four things of celery stalks, four stalks, but I did way more. And I also left the leaves on the celery because that just adds a ton of flavor to the soup. If you wanna add the flavor without adding the celery, if you don't like it, add celery seed. So I've got the veg all chopped up, including the 17 cloves of garlic. And I have my bacon in the Dutch oven, just cooking away. The bacon's nice and crispy, so I'm going to take it out and reserve it. I'm using a slotted spoon to make sure most of the grease stays in the pan because I'm gonna use it to cook the veggies. I'm gonna throw all the veggies in. You can drain that bacon grease, but I just think that adds more flavor. Add a little bit of salt and pepper too, and then let this cook for about five minutes. Once the veggies are cooked, I'm gonna add in the garlic, a couple tablespoons of tomato paste, and four cups of chicken broth, and a couple of fresh bay leaves. The amounts that I'm sharing with you, it's like on and off, right? Just know I'm doubling the recipe. I'll link it down below. I was also making a reel for Instagram. One can of drained white beans. I'm gonna throw the bacon into. 
Two pounds of bacon cooked down does not look like two pounds of bacon, right? And I did add two cans of beans, even though I said one. It's a whole thing. I'm trying to make more reels. I don't really understand why, but here I am anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna garnish it with a little bit of parsley. Completely unnecessary, but I like the color. Fresh herbs, fresh citrus, always elevated dish, even though there's no citrus in here. Love to put some herbs in there. Even though I feel like fresh parsley tastes like grass, I, cha listen, challenge me on that. It does. Have you ever tasted fresh parsley? Exactly like grass. Anyway, this soup was smash hit. Alex said it was the best soup I've ever made. It's the best soup he's ever eaten in his entire life. Take that with a grain of salt. I don't know if he was super hungry and I've definitely made this soup before, but it, I don't make it regularly. So I'm going to have to add it to the rotation because it is one of my favorites and apparently one of his favorites too. I'm going to gather all the ingredients that I need for broccoli cheddar soup. This soup is so easy to throw together and Panera wants to sell like one bowl for $20. It's ridiculous. I've heard people compare Panera food to hospital food. Is that what they're saying? These, I remember when Panera opened and everyone was amazed by it. Listen, they do sell some good, I like their stuff. I'd eat there. I don't want to spend the money on it. And that's why I make it at home, fraction of the cost. And it's really simple. It's like, I don't know, six ingredients. I'm doubling the recipe. I'll link it below and you can do whatever you want. It obviously calls for broccoli. I've got cheese in the fridge. Also heavy cream, milk, onions. Oh, chicken broth. And then it also calls for carrots. Most of the time I leave these out. What in the hell is that noise? But I'm gonna add them today. I'm gonna shred them up. I have added the pre-shredded carrots in the past and I just think they're way too thick. Ooh, that ASMR. I should turn the volume up on that. So satisfying. I don't know. Watching people grate food, whether it's apples or carrots or whatever you grate. I don't know. I can't think of literally anything else. A cheese. I'll take anything. It's so satisfying to me. I love watching it in fast motion. And uh, how many carrots do I need? I think two cups essentially is what it was. I think I grated two pretty large carrots. I always get mine, and I, I didn't peel them either, if you're wondering. I buy organic carrots because that's what Costco offers for a screaming deal. And so that's what I get, and I figure it's organic, right? <laughs> Plus I'm lazy, and it's less work. I don't have to peel it. I do wash it thoroughly. I even have a peeler with like a little brush on the end of it. I didn't use it. Listen, I didn't say I used it, but I have one. <laughs> I just run out of water and then rub it thoroughly with my hands, you know? Just scrub all that dirt off the best I can. Hey, speaking of dirt, I'm trying to get it all off of this broccoli, which when did broccoli become so expensive? I guess I could have bought it frozen, but I didn't. Fresh is always best, right? Especially when I'm trying to make a soup. And if you buy it frozen, heads up, Unless you specifically buy broccoli florets, you're going to get a lot of stems in that bag. It might seem more affordable, but you're going to be chomping on some stems. So heads up for that. And then even, I mean, listen, even frozen broccoli is more expensive than it once was. So I'm just taking a knife to it. I'm not being precise about this and literally just chopping it up. And I keep my pieces pretty large because... Um, one, I'm going to cook them down. So they're going to cook down a little bit. And then two, they're going to get like all mixed together and mushed in. And I don't want to lose the bulkiness of the broccoli. Not, a, not all of it anyways. Obviously I'll lose some of it, but I still want some bigger pieces in there. So I tend to chop mine up into fairly large pieces and then through the cooking process, they'll get smaller. So I bought three packages of the broccoli. I don't know how they're packaged, but they kind of had like two florets in each one, not florets, two like heads of broccoli in each package. So I didn't measure, I don't, you guys know me. So it was supposed to be about six cups of broccoli. It's probably way more than that. I don't care. It's called broccoli cheddar soup. Add it all in. I even, I put the veggies in, cooked those, softened them up. I think half a stick of butter is what it called for. And then I'm through, I threw in a quarter cup of flour to thicken it up. Oh no, I didn't press record. I did so much to the recipe. I, okay, what did I do? Ha a quarter cup of flour, just all over the cooked veggies. And then I added everything you see here. The recipe calls for just, I'm doubling it. I think it calls for one cup of, or two cups, no, three cups. Don't listen to me, I don't even know. 
You guys, I put in two cups of, not cups, two can, listen. Um, let me remake my brain for a second. <laughs> two cups of milk, four cups of chicken broth, two cups of heavy whipping cream in this delicious confection. And we're not finished. Uh, I'm going to add some cheese and I will definitely record that. <laughs> I'm gonna add some salt and pepper to this too. You season every layer. Got a bag of lots and toys for boys and girls the same. Hear that jingle, 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 all is very and I added some salt and pepper. Last step is to add in about four cups of cheese. I kind of go overboard on this, just four really big handfuls. Mix that in and, oh my gosh, it's basically done. Quick and easy. It's nice and thick and rich and creamy. Ooh, let's try to get a cheese pull here. All right, better than nothing. This spoon isn't really that great, but I think you can see what's happening. Ay, 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 I'm what's up. See how thick it is? Ooh, give me a bowl. This is one of our all-time favorite soups too. It's great. It's meatless meal. Um, you can use veggie stock if that's your thing I just think this is so fantastic and it's so quick and easy to throw together it's a super simple weeknight meal serve it with some bread I did get a couple loaves of bread from Publix when I went to buy celery and broccoli and stuff and you know what I did enjoy the carrots in this one I think because I shredded them in the past I bought pre-shredded carrots and they're just so thick and just not it even after cooking them down, I don't know. They still had like a bite to them. Maybe that's what I didn't like. But the flavor was mild. I think it does add a little color. So I enjoy it. And it looks more like Panera's version. But if you don't want them, like I've made it. All right, a ton now that the soups are done, I just tidied up the kitchen real quick. I still have them on the oven. You can, I'm just going to let them simmer. That's part of the reason why I cut the broccoli so big. Because, you know, the longer you let it simmer, it tends to just break apart, which is easier to eat. But I like having a bit of broccoli in my mouth. Did I tell you we have a soccer game to go to? Yeah. So we got to go do that. I feel like we always have something to do after school. The kids are busy and, you know, they like it. They're doing things that they enjoy. And they are often saying like, oh, I want to do more. <laughs> so um, Eleanor just auditioned for... A play so fingers crossed or break a leg to her she said she did a great job and uh, we'll see what part she gets and she is also wanting to do ballet she used to do ballet and then she didn't want to do it for a little bit and then got into like gymnastics and acro she used to do acro too so anyway we try to limit their activities um, because if we let them do everything that they wanted to do it would just be mass chaos and so we say okay three things you got to narrow it down. <laughs> and even three things is a lot when you're talking about, you know, essentially we have five kids. They don't all do sports. Meredith and Wolfgang obviously don't. But it just keeps us busy, keeps us on our toes, and keeps life vibrant, right? And so um, anyway, the other day she was talking about how she wants to do more dancing. And I was like, oh, I love that's my favorite thing when she used to do ballet. I loved watching her that girl has lines for days. She's just like her, she's just made for it. Some people are just made for it. I am not one of those people, but I can appreciate the people who are made for it. And oh my gosh, I just love watching dancers. Okay. Uh, anyway, I was just trying to tidy up, do some dishes before we ran out of the house and uh, chaos ensued. It's a new day. I'm not sure where we left off. I think I was doing the dishes. Um, clearly, there are more. It is the next morning so I need to pick up from breakfast and I didn't do a great job of cleaning the kitchen last night after dinner because some nights I just have to surrender to the rest of my life and just let some things fall by the wayside. I would have never gone to bed with dishes in the sink when I had one, two, even maybe three kids. But five kids, let them rot. So I need to tidy up. I made the kids lunches this morning. I, I even thought, oh, should I film this? <laughs> but I didn't. I feel like it was nothing exciting. I used the containers, the quadrant containers, and I even was like, oh, the possibilities are endless in these things. You can put tacos. But I never make it complicated enough. I, you know, do the same thing over and over again. Cheese crackers and a treat and what else? pepperoni whatever so i just keep it simple so i didn't do anything like that i did did i film making protein balls i made protein balls the other day yesterday i don't know when it was but they're almost all are they already gone no 
half of one is left there is a bite in this one so maybe i'll make some more i don't know they're my favorite they're so good and especially in the morning time i really struggle with breakfast because like i wake up really a, a lot earlier than everyone else just to get everything prepped sometimes the baby obviously is up with me most of the time because as soon as i open my eyes he also opens his eyes where was i going with that oh breakfast i guess i don't want to like sit there and make myself breakfast also bananas are boring so protein balls ugh, just hits the spot on so many flavor profile levels in my mouth all right i gotta tidy this mess up you want to help Thanks for helping me. I know it might seem daunting looking at this stuff, but it's really like this is what my kitchen looks like three times a day. <laughs> if you're living, if you're eating, and uh, I don't know, this is just what happens. Hey, hurry up, chicken butt. Meredith really enjoys that game. Meredith and Wentworth, uh, they really enjoy that game. It's harder to find games for the little ones to enjoy. Do you know what I mean? So that's a good one if you're looking for a good Christmas gift idea. That one's fantastic. Okay, tidying up the kitchen. A hundred times a day actually uh, is on average how many times I clean this place, but it's the heart of the home. One of the reasons why it gets so messy, you have to keep on top of it. And I love seeing it when it's clean. Do I always love cleaning it? No, but that's why we're doing it together, right? All the mundane tasks of being a parent and having to take care of stuff. <laughs> Speaking of being a parent, there is a song that I heard and I, it's like one of the songs that I have on repeat and I'm like loving it and obsessing over it. It's by Gabby, Gabby Barrett, one of my faves. And I didn't realize how young she is. She's like 23. I remember watching her on American Idol and she was like a teenager then. And then she like got married and had a couple kids and she's had a few hit songs. But anyway, she recently popped up on my Instagram with one of her songs. Oh my gosh, I started tearing up. It's amazing. It's called... Uh, God, gosh, I don't even know what it's called. Growing up, growing up, raising you, something like that. Just Google will know what you're talking about if you just type that in. Gabby Barrett, growing up, raising you. Listen to the song. Get ready to cry if you have children. I don't, when I think about it, I think of my oldest. So I don't know. Maybe you'll cry if you don't, if they're still young. I don't, I don't know. It is good. Maybe you won't cry at all. Maybe you won't get goosebumps either. I read a while ago that people who get goosebumps when they listen to music. I don't really know about the people, but I do know that it doesn't happen to everyone. <laughs> Something about it. Hold on. Okay. Apparently it's called frisian and it happens to about half of the people, 50% of people experience it. And I just thought it was everyone. And apparently it has something to do with the brain and being smarter and stuff. I don't really know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it does have to do with the brain, but nothing to do with your intelligence. Okay. Are you gearing up for the holidays? I'm going to tell you something right now. Outside my door, my front door, is a massive pile of Amazon packages. <laughs> you guys know I went to the thrift store and I got a bunch of gifts for the children. I also spent one day like just shopping, Christmas shopping for everyone. I have a few more gifts to buy um, some in-laws and family members and stuff like that. But for the majority, I think I'm finished for my children Whatever I couldn't find at the thrift store or at a store, I got off Amazon and then I had like the bulk shipment. So it all came on one day and holy fajoli, I've never seen so many packages in my entire life. So I'm excited to open those. But I think, I mean, I say this is the earliest that I've been done Christmas shopping. One, I'm not even done, like 95% done, I would say. And two, I'm holding up three fingers because I'm a mess. Um, what was my second point? This is the earliest I've been done. Is, did I just say that though? What is the second point? We'll never know. <laughs> but my daughter, my oldest, she's at the age where she's wanting to put together gifts for her friends. So they're doing like burr baskets. Have you heard of this? If you have a teenager, I'm sure you've heard of it. Burr basket, aka a waste of money. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh. When did, when did all everything become so expensive? And oh crap, I almost forgot. I want to put together teacher gifts, which I did get. <gasps> Where is it? Oh, I guess it's right next to me. I almost forgot. I did get all the gift cards in the mail that I got everyone. So I need to like do some wrapping. I need to share with you guys what I got for everyone. Um, I also got a few items for myself. So would you be interested in seeing like what I got myself for Christmas <laughs> kind of thing? Oh my gosh, because sometimes moms just have to get gifts for themselves, right? It's nothing too crazy. Last year, I got myself a KitchenAid <laughs> and Alex did the pickup and then wrapped the gift 
And I like we were just so busy, I totally forgot about it. And he wrapped it, which made me laugh. And then um, he got me a, the griddle that I had been wanting. So that was like the perfect Christmas. Like I, I'm not someone who is like, oh, yes, I can't wait to open all the things. I don't know. For me, it's more like, oh, my gosh, I can't wait for my kids to open all the things, all the all my the fruits of my labor, you know, seeing it all. So, okay, here's the before and after of the kitchen before and after. Ooh, ah, so incredible. So amazing. You know, it always amazes me when I watch home alone and their house is like clean. Like what? They're even their kitchen is spotless when they were rushing out the door, running late for their flight. I'm like how, like what? I would have left so much crap. All right. Anyway, that was my kitchen. Now I did buy the totes. I went to Costco and got some more totes. We are, we have the shelves that hold these totes anyway, so it's kind of perfect. And plus they're really affordable. It's like eight or $9 per tote and they're large and in charge. And, um, you know, at a norm, at a different store, these would be, I don't know, 30 bucks or something ridiculous. So these are fantastic. And I'm just sorting through all the gifts that I got for the children and I'm putting them in their respectable tote. So I have five of them and you'll see, oh my gosh, you'll see as I fill the totes. And this happens, I feel like every year where I think, oh, I didn't get anything for this child. And then I end up getting the most <laughs> for that child because I just go overboard and I feel like, oh, you know, and then I start seeing things that they would enjoy. Definitely I got the least amount for Wolfgang, but he wasn't like a priority to me. Like he'll, he'll literally play with anything. And we have so many toys from having a bunch of kids that I felt like he didn't really need much. He could benefit from some new outdoor toys um, because he does. First of all, he loves to be outdoors, but he'll literally play with the dirt and like sticks, you know, but he has these like riding cars. And we first of all, the one that we have is from when Avelina was born when she was little. And so it's like, you know, 12 years old. And at this point, I'm like, well, we can't get rid of it now. <laughs> you know, he's only going to use it for probably like six more months. So I don't want to spend the money on a new one. So I don't know. I'm in limbo about that. If I go to the thrift store between now and Christmas and I see one, I might pick it up for him. But otherwise, like they're expensive. If you buy brand new, you can always buy a second hand, even on Facebook Marketplace. That's my favorite place to go, especially for kids toys, because they only play with them for a certain amount of time, unless you have, you know, younger kids that you're just going to continue to pass them down to. But as you can see, Wolfgang is helping me sort all the toys and it's pretty exciting. So for me, it's a visual representation of, okay, we are done. <laughs> this is plenty. And I know some people get this amount of toys just for one child. I feel like I am the middle ground here. I, in one sense, I do feel like I kind of go overboard. And then in another sense, I think, I'm middle ground. I'm not like super minimal with their gifts. Some people give three gifts because that's what Jesus got. Some people just go above and beyond and they have like one or two children and they just get them everything under the sun. I feel like I got my kids everything under the sun and it's probably, I don't know, 10 items each ish ish. I say that definitely not Wolfgang, but there's that. And then the smaller items for stockings and stuff. Like I went to Ulta. I don't count that as like each individual item. And it's more of a price point too, which it adds up the more kids you have, right? It doesn't have to. And I definitely saved a ton of money going to the thrift store, which made me happy. But that is that. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me. Let me know what your plans are for Christmas, what you guys are going to do. And, uh, if you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day. I'll see you next time. Bye.